We've made it a habit here on the channel of playing these games from flat out games that have a solo mode solo on the channel. We've done Calico, we've done Cascadia, we've done Verdant, we've done Point City. There may be even some I missed. We've even done the digital version of Calico, which was based on Calico, obviously. So when we got Nocturne in and it had a solo mode, I figured let's bring it to the channel. So join me at the table, I'll explain the rules, I'll play it for you, I'll score the game, and you can see how I did. Here we are set up for the solo play of Nocturne. So to set up for solo, you are going to set up the same way you would for a two-player game, which means you have a 4x4 four four grid, you only have four tiles on the forest sprite board, you have all of your tokens, instead of removing a 3 or 4 as you would in the higher player games. You also have a deck of cards that's going to denote where the AI goes. You have I have their chips up here. This is my starting concoction card. Normally this is kept hidden, but I'll keep it face up so you can see what it is. We are playing with the advanced setup, so I have my animal character turn to their advanced side. We have our three twilight goals. We have our three moonlight goals. We have our shadow tokens. We have our stacks of tiles, and that is it. I'll go over briefly how to play. If you want a much more in-depth version, you can check out the unbox we did right up top that did release the same day this playthrough also released. So you can watch them back and forth if you like. Basically, I'm going to start every round. There are two rounds, the Twilight round and the Moonlight round. In those rounds, there is a variable number of spell casting phases. To start a round, I'm going to take my lowest number chip. In this instance, one, I'm going to put on any of these tiles. I'm then going to flip over this top card. It's going to tell me what number chip they want to place out and in what direction. I will then place that chip on the adjacent tile in that direction. If there is none in that direction, for if I have mine here and they want it to go north, then I will just go in a clockwise motion and put it until they are able to place one. If there are multiple options available to them, they will always go left to right, top to bottom. After they place one, I choose if I want to place one. We're going to go back and forth until one of us passes. When one of us passes, whoever played the last chip will claim the tile that that chip is on. They'll put it over their display. Mine is going to be around here. There's just going to be a face down display up here. Anyone who did not win a tile, or if I don't win a tile, I will choose when I take back my chips if I want to put them all here or put one of them on the forest sprite board. At the end of the round, we are going to be able to claim tiles from this board based on who has the highest going to the lowest. If they don't win a tile based on what card is showing up, they may put a disc over here. There will be a little mousy symbol on the card to denote if they do place one over there. Then we start the next round. Whoever won that tile starts the next one. So I'll flip over another card if it's them. It's got a starting spell on it. Um, it didn't quite say in the rule book where it goes, but I'm going to assume I will follow the arrow again. So if they win this town, the arrow points left. I'll put it here. The only exception is if they're able to corner cast, which I haven't gone over yet. They will corner cast with their lowest available disc. And when you corner cast, if, say, these three tiles are gone and this was the last tile taken, if, they, if you put a tile here, that's considered corner casting because you're automatically going to win it, and then the next player gets to go and put their tile anywhere, or their token, chip, disc, however you want to call it, anywhere they want. So again, going back and forth, till all, we're going to go back and forth till all the tiles are gone until we both pass completely. Then any Twilight Goals that need to be awarded will be rewarded. We will resolve the Forest Sprite Board. Anyone who has this left will be awarded... Shadow tokens, whoever has the highest remaining number will get the highest and we'll be going back and forth until all those are, dis or until the amount is dispersed based on how many discs are remaining. We'll bring all our discs back. We're going to discard lowest disc to highest disc, depending on how many shadow tokens we have. So if I have three of them, I'd be discarding one, two, and one of my threes. We then reveal the moonlight goals, and then we play another round exactly the same way, going until they're all gone. At the end of that, we will resolve the forest sprite again, board again. We'll then put mirror stones where we want them. They are basically going to copy a tile, the tile itself, but not any symbols that are on it. 
We will then go into final scoring. Final scoring is skulls are going to score the points on them. Feathers for however many you have. That's how many points you get. There's two different types of mushrooms that score differently. This wants one or three mushrooms. This wants two mushrooms. Your herbs are worth a set number of points. And then an additional points if you collect three, four, or five of the different letters. This one over here with the W is wild, so it can be any letter. The eggs are different in a solo game. You are going to score based on how many eggs you collect. Typically, it's whoever has the most has a certain amount. I will look up that number when the time is necessary, but you basically want to have more so they're worth more points. You're going to get negative points for any cursed chest you have. You're going to score your concoction cards. To score the concoction cards, you use the symbols on the tiles and on your character, and a Icon can only be used once for the concoction card. So if I need a mushroom, I have this mushroom. If I have another card that needs a mushroom, I cannot use this same mushroom. Any twilight goals I win, I'll get points for. The moonlight goals will have scoring conditions for what those I get points. Two points for if I have any numbered discs remaining at the end of the game that aren't out on the board. And then two points if I don't use my special ability. There are two special tiles in the game. One of them is not out here. The first one I will show that is out here is the Cursed Treasure Chest. If I take this, it's worth a negative point, but I'll draw three tiles from the stacks, keep one, and discard the other two from the game. There's rune tiles. You'll possibly see those in round two. When you take one of those, you're going to draw three concoction cards, keep one, and put the other two underneath the deck. That is the basics of how to play. Again, as I said, if you want a more in-depth one, check out the unboxing that we did with the link up above. All that being said, I'm pretty sure we are ready to begin. So I will start. I'm going to go through probably one of the phases, and then we'll fast forward to near the end, and then I'll resolve the whole Twilight phase so you can see how that plays out. Go into the Moonlight phase. I'll fast forward through the Moonlight phase because it's played exactly the same way. And then we'll get to our final round at end game scoring. And so with my first disc, I think we're going to start out down here on the Mare Stone because I know I won't be able to get it. I want to think I'm going to try and work my way up to the Cursed Treasure Chest. So you flip over their first card. So they are going to play a four or higher. So we're going to grab their four disc. And it goes up. So it's going to go there because of the up arrow. So this mouse symbol is the one that denotes that if when we're resolving, if that is showing, then that is when they will put their highest number disc on the forest sprite board. And then as you can see, if they were starting, they would have played a three. So now I need to decide, do I want to go higher? I think I'm going to go with my six on that one. So they want to go one or more higher, so they do have a seven. So normally we'd go there, there's nothing there. So you resolve in a clockwise manner. So they go to the cursed treasure chest. That's the one I wanted. So I think instead, so the other disc that we have besides the numbers is the star spell. It seems pretty early to be using this, especially for the tr uh, cursed treasure chest. You know, I think I'm gonna not do it. But when you play this one, if I played it here, it basically copies that number and is an insta win chip for me. So I think I am going to, I probably should, I should have went with the seven. I knew it, but I didn't think they'd be able to, I didn't think they were going to go one higher already. Um, so yeah, we are going to pass. So they keep this one. They flip their chip here. As I said, I'll just put theirs face up. They're going to take theirs back because they won the tile. I take mine back and now I can choose and I am going to put my one on the forest sprite board. On the forest sprite board, the lower numbers get pushed down towards the end as higher numbers go. If you have a number between numbers, it gets put in between them. And if any point this gets pushed off this one into the three player, it will come back to my supply. So there's that. So we'll have them go. So if starting, they play a three. They want to play down, so we go right there. Um, so where do I want to maneuver to? Because I do think I want to try and get the herb tiles. Oh, when they do take tiles over here, if they do, they will take the left to right, top to bottom, but we'll get into that when we get to the end of the round. 
Let's just go with a four and see what they do. Four or higher, so they have a five, and they'll go on the mirror stone. You know what? Sure, let's go with a six. So they will go up to a five. So because I'm at a six, up to a five, that means they are going to pass. So that means I get this tile. So I'm just going to put mine right there. I'll take my disc back. Then they have the mouse showing. So their five comes to the four sprite board and their three comes up here. And I am starting. So now this is an instance where I could corner cast. I can put anything right here. I'm immediately going to win because they cannot go orthogonally adjacent. So it might be a good idea, which I think I am going to do. So I'm going to corner cast there with the two. So it's an instant win. So I flip that over. I bring that over to here, like so. And now it'll be their turn to go first. And now they can put their disc anywhere. But because it's anywhere, they are going to go left to right, top to bottom. So their disc is going to go on the mysterious egg. And if starting, they put a three on that egg. So you get the general idea of how the game plays. I am now going to continue going until we get to the end of the Twilight Round, and then I'll show you how that plays there. All right, so we're coming back, so they'll take the last one. And I just realized I forgot to look at these. So I don't remember who the first one was to win with a three. Well, his three and his three, so obviously I won one with a three, so I'll get that. Be the first to have four different symbols. Does he even have four? One, two, three, four. So he probably got that. One, two, three. Because I didn't have four. So he would have taken that. I forgot to do those. And then they have the most spaces up there. So they don't actually really score points. They're just preventing me from getting points. So now we resolve this board. So they are going to take one, two, and three. And that means I get this last one. The other benefit of this forest sprite board is this is actually the tiebreaker. If there's a tiebreaker for one of these or just in general, you're always going to look on here, even at the end of the game, if there's the scores are tied. All right, so let me just consult the rule book 
really quick to make sure I do all of these things. Resolve that. Award Shadow Spell tokens. So they are going to get a 9 and a 10. Because they are the only one left with some left. We retrieve our spell tokens. Then any excess, so they have two, so they're going to get rid of their one and two. Let's bring our fives down here. Slide those over. And now they have a nine and ten. Discard excess, and then draw the moonlight goals. Refill the tiles, and refill the sport, the forest sprite grid. So let's reveal these now. So in regards to these, these typically want your discs in certain spaces in regard to the grid. So this is three per control area, exactly three discs. So if you have four, you don't score because it needs to be exactly three. This is per control area in that corner shape. A disc can only be used for one instance. So even if I had this, that's only one. I'd actually need to expand it out like that to be able to score that one twice. And then two per corner space. So that is a little bit more to think about and this one is you're really kind of concerning yourself with these as well. So let me get set up for that really quick and we'll be right back with that round. All right, so here we are set up for the Moonlight round. We did get some of those rune tiles up. So again, if I get this, I will draw three from here and keep one. Because right now I just have this one and I easily have this. I have my two feathers, I have a mushroom, I have plenty of herbs. So I am going to try and want to get one of those to try and get more points for these concoction cards. Alrighty, so I will see you at the end of this round.
All right, so that is the end of the Moonlight round. I did not focus on these as much as I would have liked because I blew it. I only really have that one. I don't even have a corner space. I have that shape once. I don't have a control over exactly three, so I kind of blew it on those Moonlight goals there. All right, so let's do the Forest Sprite board. So they're going to grab this mushroom first which annoys me because I wanted it there because right now those are scoring zero. But I get the other three. So we grab that, we grab that, and then we can grab there. We grab three more concoction cards. So yeah, we'll just take that one. Like so. And now we can assign the Mirror Stone. What the Mirror Stone does is, again, it copies the actual tile but not the symbols on it so i placed on one of these it would just be an a a b a c a d or an e these no longer matter because oh for scoring they just have the symbols if i place it on this skull it'd be a worth three. Oh, actually i can mimic one of those so i can get my 13 or so the eggs Looking on here, the score of the eggs, if you have one to two, it's one point each. Three is two points each, or four is three points each. So right now, this is nine. If I put this on there, or sorry, this is six. If I put this on there, it'll be 12. So that's a six-point play. One, two, three, four, five. That's a six-point play, but this is a 13-point play. So we'll add it to our mushrooms. All right, so now we will bust out our score sheet here. Put down my name. Oh, I should mention with these shadow tokens, they are not assigned to a color once placed. So, for instance, if Orange was an actual player, you would not be including these when looking at these goals because you lose control over them. Same thing as you... Don't want to put them on the forest bright board because you don't have control of them after that. All right, so first we do my skulls is five points. My feathers, one, two, three, four, five of them. That is 18. My mushrooms is 13. We have one, four, seven, eight, nine. Five different is 12, so that's 21. The eggs, I said, are two points each, so two, four, six. That's the other thing I want to make sure you understand is it's the actual tile. These symbols only matter for concoction cards. I have no cursed chests. So now we do go to these concoction cards. So we basically, the easiest way of doing it is add up each one and make sure you have it. So we need four skulls. Done. We need one, two, three, four, five, six feathers. One, two, three, four, five, six feathers. We need one, two, three mushrooms. One, two, and three mushrooms. One, two eggs. Two eggs. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. We also can include the one on our player card if we're doing that. So we have all of that. So we have six. 12, 19, 24 on concoction cards. We got one twilight goal for three points. We did not get that. We have one instance of this one, so that is three points. I have one numbered left, two, and then I forgot that I could have used this at one point because it's before casting any spells, swap any two tiles in the forest grid. So I could have even done that when I did my corner cast to make sure I got the tiles I wanted. But either way, that now scores me two points. So we have 5, 13, 16, 17, 23, 27, 30, 33, 35, 37. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 97. Look on our board, and 97 plus is mystical. Oh, I got pretty high on this one. So that was Nocturne Solo. 
Um, the deck definitely adds some ran a lot more randomness to it than playing with a normal player. Because a normal player, you can kind of tell what they might be going for. Like if they're trying to collect the herbs, well then you know if you put this here, they're probably going to go towards the herbs and you can try and divert them as such. But with this one, the randomness and never really knowing what number is coming out is kind of a little trickier to plan. But hope you enjoyed. I also hope you go down and hit the like, subscribe, and share button. And that you will comment on this video. And then maybe ring the bell when you subscribe to the channel. That way you can be alerted to when I drop more videos. Alrighty, so until next time, get active at night.